We also will actually look at the layering that, that is present within the bow. This is a similar piece of bow compared to the previous slide. And we can see I've put my cursors from here to here. That's to show from the lumen, which is this bit here, there's a little bit of uh, speckled fluidy ingester within the lumen, to the other side. This is stomach. Uh, for sure, this is thickened, but also there is no normal layering present. So the complete loss of layering is something that is very suggestive of some kind of infiltrative disease. There are a few inflammatory conditions, very, very severe uh, intestinal inflammation where you get in inflammatory cells that will put themselves in and, and will lose the layering. But that complete loss is a bit of a hallmark of neoplasia. Still need your FNAs to confirm it, but it would be a worrying feature. Um, however, beyond looking for loss of layering and presence of layering, we can actually look at the layers themselves. For a start, when we look at this piece of bowel here, we can see that actually this is the lumen, this is the uh, linear uh, structure right at the centre of the bowel, this is the serosa on the outside, but if you count, there's actually an increased number of layers, there's actually seven layers present there, which is abnormal. And the way they are distributed is also abnormal, this is jejunum, and normally we'd expect the, the sort of thickest black line uh, to be this mucosal layer, and actually, it's out here in the muscularis layer. We see that even better when we see it in cross-section. We'd normally expect to see this layer being thicker than this layer. And there are actually now published values of the proportions of the bowel wall that we would expect. But actually, it's a subjective thing. I think in the small intestine, if the mucosal layer um, is thinner than the muscularis layer, that would be abnormal. And that can be associated with a variety of different things. Um, altering the proportions of the layer, particularly with muscularis thickening, can be seen, particularly in cats, associated with inflammatory bowel disease. But also, again, particularly in cats, can be seen with lymphoma. You can see sometimes thickening of the muscularis in cases where there is muscular hypertrophy, so these patients that have pyloric stenosis because of muscular hypertrophy, or if there's a downstream obstruction, sometimes you'll see this thickening present as well. So altering the distribution of the layers, uh, for sure, would be a, a feature uh, that we'd see with a lot of diseases. This area where we get increased numbers of layers is something that's being increasingly recognised, I think, as our ultrasound machines have got better. And there's been a bit of a flurry of, of paper publishing on these, these extra lines that we see. Um, so some of them have been associated just with sort of chronicity, maybe some fibrosis being um, deposited, um, particularly in cats that's been shown. Uh, some of these cats have sort of chronic IBD, have had extra layers. In some cases, it's been shown as having no clinical significance whatsoever. Um, so having an extra layer is not necessarily a <coughs> worrying finding, but I think it's worth certainly looking at and making sure that you then assess the distribution of your layers, which certainly has been associated with clinical disease. And the final example I want to show in this um, uh, sort of appearance is when we look at the um, mucosal layer, we'd expect the mucosa to be completely black. And in some cases, when you look at it, it just has a degree of increased echinacea. It's not completely black. And this is one of those examples. So this is a patient, if you get your eye in, we look within that mucosa, you can see that the white specks within it are kind of starting to align as if they're making some um, striations which are perpendicular to the long axis of the bowel. And we see that, I think, sometimes best when we see it as a little clip. If you look, those little dots that are present are just starting to align in one way. Um, now, this is something we associate with dilation of the lacteals. We see that with a variety of different things. doesn't necessarily mean pathology, but in particular, we do see it associated with lymphangiectasia. So it's certainly a feature to look for. Also, some cases of IBD will have a degree of speckling of the mucosa. So it's not pathognomic, but it's another feature to just start to get your eye in for, because it will certainly help with your scanning. It's worth looking for abnormal content. Um, as I said, we'll actually look for the different sort of patterns of content within normal dogs uh, when it comes to doing the practical sessions. It's a lot easier to see when it's, it's live. Um, we call a completely empty bowel a mucus pattern. So you see, as we saw in the, the previous example, uh, just that sort of slightly <coughs> fuzzy, hyperechoic lumen uh, through the centre. 
Obviously, if there's fluid present, you'd expect to see an anechoic uh, uh, patch within the lumen of the bowel. If there's gas present, it will be hyperechoic and we'll have that dirty shadow. What I want to show you uh, today when we see the patients is the whole variety of things we see when there is ingestion moving through.